Hello everyone, my name is Devin Adams and I am a Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona and I do these videos for the people who have taken my class and I normally don't do so many videos in a row but I got a request from one of my favorite students that uh, they needed to see this demo so you know what, no big deal, let's go ahead and do it so what are we doing here? Well in this playlist, alright, for our demo we are going to take advantage of the FortiGates, um, uh, I swear I did these too late, so, uh, on the FortiGates um, uh, GeoIP list. So it's a part of the FortiGuard ser services and it's a database of all the public IP addresses according to their IANA country codes. So uh, we could have like a VPN access or we could have some kind of like, you know, uh, server being accessible through a DMZ. And maybe we only want to allow a certain country to access that resource and that's what's known as a whitelist approach to uh, blocking or allow access. A blacklist on the other hand is a little bit more open and uh, meaning that instead of just permitting one particular or two particular addresses through we're gonna let everything through except for a handful of uh, countries. So, and that's really what it comes down to. We're doing we're doing country blocking. All right. So, um, our goals for this video are pretty straightforward. So, in this first video, we're actually not gonna talk about anything per se with the geo blocking itself, but we are gonna create a web server, a DMZ, and a VIP object for this demo. So, I thought I'd just go ahead and do that real quickly, even though I've done it in other videos. Um, just simply so you can lap it up and try it yourself and then uh, we're going to explain a little bit more how this is done and then we're going to create the address objects in the groups for both a whitelist and a blacklist and then we're going to go ahead and write the firewall policies to try it out now also there is a caveat when you are using VIP objects and uh, and that's if you decide to have a rule sitting on top of your DMZ interfaces uh, that does a kind of a, a block from there uh, that sits at the top and uh, that will make more sense when I talk about it but we'll try it out with and without this VIP match rule set in the CLI because uh, if you do not have a VIP object in the firewall policy on a matching interface pair it actually does not get evaluated um, it just jumps right to the VIP object and anything that doesn't have a VIP object in that interface pair gets skipped so we're gonna see if that's true or not and that will make more sense when we get there so uh, but enough of that business let's go ahead and create a web server now uh, I've had older videos in the past on my playlist that creates a web server by spinning up a Windows machine here right and then and then turning on the IIS service to create a web page. Also, we saw it done with CentOS, right? Using a Linux build in Apache. There is actually a way easier way to do this uh, using the tools in GNS3 that I wasn't even aware of. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. So, I'm going to get a switch here and let's just get a good old Ethernet switch, plop it out here. All right. And I'll just kind of put it over here somewhere. And I usually name these the IP addresses that I'm going to use just for myself. So our DMZ is going to be a 172. All right. That actually doesn't do anything yet, but it will. And then uh, for our web server, interestingly enough, there is a, where did it go? Let's take a look here. There is a toolbox. All right. Right there. Toolbox. And uh, this has a, a host of, of different options, right? But one of them is hosting a web page. And it's pretty low when it comes to terms of resources. And uh, I'm just going to use it for our web server. So, did it? Oh, there it is. There we go. And. Uh, before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and maybe change the symbol so it looks more like a, a web server, right? Uh, there we are. And maybe I'm going to configure it and yeah, we have to do this. So let's go ahead and set an IP address. All right, no big deal. There we are. And we're using the 172. 
one, seven, two, 16, one, and I'll do a 100, all right? And then the gateway is gonna be 172, 16, one, two, five, four, which will be the, the interface of the four gates, so on and so forth. And yeah, why not? We're not gonna need DNS, but here we go. All right. Now what's nice about this, right, is that um, we should be able to get a web page out of there and it's pretty low maintenance. So um, way easier than the other way I was doing it. And of course I can't see, <laughs> I can't see the end of my apply here to save it. Let me go off screen real quick. My resolution's too big here. All right, there we go. There was a save at the button that I couldn't hit, but there we are. All right. And I'll just change the name of this to web server. Okay. And our DMZ is going to pop out of port two onto the subnet mask into our toolbox. And then we'll turn it on. Bloop. There we go. We'll let that boot. And while that's booting, let's go ahead and write the rule and the VIP object for it. So this essentially creates a, a DMZ, so a demilitarized zone or a perimeter network. Um, so let's get into our Windows machine. As you can see, we were packet capturing in the last video. But we're gonna come over here to our interfaces and we're gonna assign an IP address that to that port too. So now when you create the interfaces, don't forget to use an, an alias. It makes administrating these things a whole heck of a lot easier to read but more importantly too these rules are made to keep us from screwing up so it puts things on here that uh, that would normally you know break our configuration settings and and hides them so anyways here we go so 17 oops so 172 16 1 and 254 slash 24 alright and uh, yeah, you know what, just for the sake of testing purposes, I'll put a ping on there just so we can have some connectivity access from the inside. So, all right, good times, good times there. Okay, so um, yeah, let's go ahead and write the rule. So, oh, we can't write the rule yet. We have to create the virtual IP address because we do not want, uh, you know, a publicly facing IP within our internal network. So we'll do a virtual IP address. And this is how we do DNAT and we'll call this a web server. And because we are using the real internet, um, I do not use uh, public IP addresses. That's why there's this like Linux box that's acting as a pseudo WAN connection. So it's really in the 10.200 address space. So if you guys ever see a 10.200 in my examples and in my classes, that's usually our make-believe public IP addresses. But we own IP addresses in the 10.200.1 range on this interface. And this would be like if you had a block of, of public IP addresses. So we're going to pick one to be our VIP object here. So um, interface, we're going to bind it to port 1 because that's the one that's doing the natting. We're listening on port 1 for the external IP address and you know in real life you'd have to own this and it'd have to be routed to the FortiGate uh, but we're going to do a 150 alright and that's going to come in and go to 172.16.1.50 right is that what we did? we did 50 right? I think we did I'll double check that just to make sure we'll say okay That's how, that's how out of it I am. All right, so let's go to edit. Nope, see, I did do 100. Oh, poop. All right, not a big deal. <laughs> this is why I'm not a YouTuber, guys. It's because I don't, I don't practice or script these things. I just roll with them. So there we go. Sorry, my bad. 100. So we're going to knock on the outside, and we're going to ask for 10, 200, 150, and then it's going to DNAT into our DMZ. So we'll hit OK. And uh, that's just creating the, the virtual IP object. We now have to use it in a firewall policy to make it all happen. So here we are, we'll create new. 
and once again um, naming those interfaces make it a whole heck of a lot easier but we'll call this web server okay and our incoming interface is going to be our WAN1 popping out to our DMZ all right our source now the internet's a pretty darn big place so for right now we're just going to say all okay and our destination is going to be our web server see there and the services is just going to be what we need for our web access all right we don't need anything else anything else going there so and because the vipping the vipping the natting happens right here in the web server we're going to turn off nat you don't need nat with that all right so we're going to hit okay and technically speaking that should be it enough to get out to our web server so now the only thing that's left is to try it from the outside world so we are going to take a quick little trip to the other side of our of our cloud all right here we go and we're just going to type in what should be the public IP address of that of that uh, uh, web server and there you guys go this is exactly what I was expecting all right so um, and that's what that toolbox does by the way we can upload files we can make custom web pages and as you can see here our VIP did work but uh, we had access to all sources right well maybe we don't want access to all sources maybe this is uh, the endpoint of like an SSL VPN or a IPsec VPN and we only want certain countries knocking on the door so um, that was just a quick demo on how to set this up in GNS3 for the lab so in the next video we're going to uh, come together and really explain this geo IP database that's offered from the FortiGuard services and also creating our whitelist and blacklist objects so alright guys I hope that was helpful and like I said the only goal of this video was to set up the environment and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video to actually create the, the GOIP addresses. So, all right, until next time.